it's something that you won't ever find in plastic injection molding. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and welcome to another unboxing. I'm gonna be having a look at a small little kit today. Might not be able to see that. There we go. It's probably out of focus now. So this is the 35th scale resin figure of a French armored car personnel. And this is from Copper State Models. So let's have a closer look at the box. So probably get to see quite a bit more now. I mean, it's a very tiny box. It only has one small figure in it, but the figures are very, very well sculpted. So this is a French Marine armored car officer and this is to suit the copper state models uh, French armored car now you can see how he's really rugged up looks really nice very flowing uh, uh, clothing and the sculptor for these is incredibly good any of the figures that are actually done by copper state models are exceptional so let's have a closer look inside very well packed for security because as you know resin can be quite fragile and let's just take all the bits out and have a closer look. Now there's not a lot of parts as you expect from resin. Now you don't want a lot of parts because resin um, can be hard to work with. So we've got we've got the, the figure in pretty much one piece. The head is separate which we have here and then we've got the arms which are separate either side here. just take that away just broken off a little bit of the um, the bottom pour part so if you know resin is actually poured and they're all hand poured and they're poured this way so you're going to have some excess this is actually the sprue part which you're going to cut off and remove now the advantage of resin is it's able to give you very fine and undercut details which can't be done from injection molding because with the injection molding your molds actually have to lift apart and not capture anything but we've resin is actually undercuts here so you have a lot of sharp detail and it's something that can't be achieved with injection molding so let's zoom in and we'll have a closer look at these details now I think I've probably gone in a bit far how's that that's pretty sharp okay so we can concentrate on the top of the jacket there and the scarf See how the scarf has been folded and it's got multiple layers there. Also got all the, the small, what do you call that? Little threads that are hanging off the ends of the, the scarf. Almost look like there's movement there already with some, some breeze. You've got the, uh, the satchel case. You can see the, the buckles really sharp. And this is what I mean by the undercut. See under here? It actually looks like clothing and it creates its own shadow. And that's something that you won't ever find in plastic injection molding. Okay, the thing with resin is you will need to glue these together with uh, super glue. And with resin, they can be two part as well. So if there's two part, you might have a little bit of flash of where they join. So in this situation, it's actually very, very clean. From bare eye, I can't really see anything here. But there will be some slight cleaning up to do probably along the sides you probably just see the sides here of the pants so this line here may need a bit of scraping because usually the joins and pants would be across the front okay so just a little bit of sanding clean it up and then you can see the quality of detail in the boots too okay all the way to the laces okay from there let's have a look at the head the head is the part that gives the most character and you can see here, well, you've got a huge undercut with the, the cap. So he's got a moustache there. Now for a tiny figure like this, even the ears have incredible detail. Now ears like this, you will never see this sort of detail on a plastic model kit. Okay, just the sharpness of it. And then you've got the folds in the back of the, uh, the cap. And then that neck there, now that's got a, a mold part there, which I might be able to just flick off, which I have. And if we're lucky, we'll be able to fit it in here. And you see how natural that looks already. So the natural angle of the neck facing forward, it's not totally straight. Looks absolutely fantastic. And you notice that the neck was fairly long. 
So you do have a degree of moving the pose a little bit, okay? So the head can spin a little bit in one particular direction. So you can have them like this, or even like this. So that's great. Okay, and then you have the arms. Okay, so there's locators on the arms there as well. So for this one, let's press it into place. And you see the join there between the arm and the torso. It's actually very, very good. So you won't need much filler there as well. Just a tiny bit, because it does look like a little bit, oh, you may not need any actually. You can see how that fits. Really nice. And let's see if we can get this side on as well. So this is into here. Now I'm not sure, but, oh, there we go. So that, that hand is meant to be in a pocket. So that should be angled like so. You can see how the pocket's open? That looks really nice. There we go. So you probably need to trim a little bit there. Okay, you can see here, just a slight trim, just so we can get that fitting a bit more naturally. And you have super nice pose there. Let's see if we can get the head all together. And that's a big difference. Just with resin, you can see how much detail there is just by holding these parts together. So there you go. So that is the Copper State Models 35th scale. French Marine. And that's a resin kit in 35th scale. So these are from World War One. so you could use that. It doesn't have to be with an armor car, it could be just by itself. Uh, or you can use it for any other part of a diorama or any other vehicle, I guess, of that period. So there we go. So it's the Cop State Models 135th scale in resin, French Marine from the First World War. So if you like this uh, open boxing, please give me a like below. And if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing. So thank you very much.